Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Deal. We got a ranked Big Ten matchup. Illinois heading on the road to Lincoln, Nebraska Friday night. What I'm most fired up about, it just as the college football fan in me, is looking at the environment that we're going to see in Lincoln on Friday night. Like You go back to Saturday night against Northern Iowa, most programs would kind of have a sleepy Saturday night game after a massive win against Colorado. Not in Lincoln, Nebraska. Like The amount of buzz around this program, it really does seem at an all-time high, at least in my lifetime of following college football. Really excited for this matchup. You look at Nebraska, clearly different, but you look at Illinois. Another clearly different team, specifically on the defensive side of the football. Luke Altmeyer hasn't thrown a pick yet. I think there's a lot to like about Illinois as well. Fired up to get into this matchup. Now, before we do, and as always, just want to say one thank you to you guys. These game prediction episodes have been a blast for the boys. The amount of support you guys have thrown in the comments section, it means the absolute world. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Much more importantly, let it fly in the comments section, right? Whether you agree with the boys, whether you disagree, that's the beauty of this. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. And Dill, without further ado, let's start with this Nebraska offense going up against an Illinois defense that will take the football away. 2.5 turnovers forced per game throughout the first three games. That's really how they beat Kansas week two. That was Nebraska's bugaboo in 2023, turning the football over. Now, they've significantly cleaned it up in 2024. That's one of the matchups you're looking at, but I think most importantly, Nebraska, we've talked about Nebraska playing on your terms. We want to see it again. You look at Illinois struggling to stop the run five yards per carry. That's 90th in the country, and particularly how they've gotten the ball ran on them. Like You go back to the film against Kansas week two, Kansas in 2023 had a lot of success getting it out to the perimeter and kind of playing with the eyes of the linebackers and safeties. Kansas largely ran the football between the tackles with Devin Neal and had a lot of success. I think you can tell Illinois probably struggling to replace a guy like Johnny Newton on the inside. If you're Nebraska, you've had a ton of success running between the tackles. I think this interior offensive line with Ben Scott leading the way, Micah and Justin Evans has been dominant. That is probably how you want to set the tone in this football game. And I think one luxury Illinois probably might have is they have a really good secondary. I think both they're at the safety and at the corner spot. They did a really good job on a Kansas team that I think does have a lot of athletes, did a good job testing teams down the field at least last year. And in, in Illinois largely shut them down and obviously took the ball away. So to me, it'll be, can they stop the run? enforce third and longs and try to get the football away. This is, this, avenue. this is where Nebraska's offense is different though. Like you talk about Dylan Rola. I think he's not only been a very good quarterback for Nebraska throughout the first three games, but he's helped the run game out. Like you go back and watch the Nebraska offense from 2023, bunch of loaded boxes, seven, eight man boxes. Nebraska wanted to run the football because they couldn't really throw the football. And it was hard to run the football when you don't really have a passing attack that can work vertically down the field. Just the presence of Dylan and what he can do pushing the ball down the field. You couple that with guys like Jamal Banks and Isaiah Nayor. It's very hard for opposing defenses to kind of load the box on this Nebraska offense because of what Nebraska can do in that passing attack. And, They've and then their ability to hurt teams with the tight ends, that'll be something I'm looking at because Illinois doesn't have the biggest linebackers. I think they, their team speed looks a lot better. I thought they did a good job yes. covering sideline the sideline against Kansas. But I look at a guy like Carter Nelson or Thomas Fedoni or Borkshire, like that linebacker crew, again, not the biggest group of guys, not the tallest at least. I kind of wonder if that's a position. Again, Nebraska certainly tried to get that group involved much more in the football games than they were able to last year. And Dylan Rayola, or Rayola his ability, obviously, to distribute the ball across the field and make big-time college football throws, big-time NFL throws, probably you could argue as well, has kind of changed what they can do. So, again, I'm kind of looking. Obviously, I think there's going to be a heavy emphasis on first stopping the run because, frankly, we haven't really seen Dylan Rayola be forced to play into that kind of game. They've run the ball pretty effectively every game they've played, whether it was Colorado, whether it was UNI, they've obviously overmatched teams up front. So again, it will be interesting to see. Obviously, I'm pretty sure Illinois, that's going to be priority one, stop the run, and then see what they can do in terms of hurting, yeah, kind of hurting teams that are playing them. Yeah, I think I, I think that's probably the biggest storyline. I think you'll see Illinois probably walk a safety into the box, take away what Nebraska can do on the ground, and then when you're going to ask Dylan to make those throws, and again, he's done 
not only has Dylan made those draw dropping throws, he's managed the game really well. He's managed the pocket really well. And he's kept the football out of harm's way. You look at Illinois, like they want to take the football away. So and that they battle, got two guys who I think can do it. And Xavier Scott and Miles Scott, those two guys dogs. in the nickel spot or the safety spot, really, really good knack for getting to the ball, whether that's on a screen, whether that's obviously playing that deep safety role. So again, Dylan Rayola probably hasn't been tested by a secondary that's quite as good, especially when, when he can't necessarily just re- rely on pounding the ball. And we'll see, obviously, if that happens. But those two guys are the guys I'm looking for. They'll need to make big impact plays from that secondary, I think, if they're going to win. Yeah, D- Dylan walking that line between I'm going to make difference-making plays and push the ball down the field, but also keeping it out of harm's way. It's something he's done really good, especially for a true freshman the first three games. You'll have to be very good against Illinois because, again, they want to take the football away. Let's flip sides here. Let's start with this Nebraska defense that I think Matt Rule's a little pissed about how the defense performed against a UNI on Saturday night. Now you look at the scoreboard 34-3. to I think that's just the expectation of this Nebraska defense. Like They didn't do a great job getting off on third down, specifically in that first half. They obviously got better. Still, they played really good football. They only gave up three points. Matt Rule and Tony White, I think, have a little bit of a different standard in terms of how they want this Nebraska defense to look. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> looking at this matchup here, the biggest thing I'm looking for is can you get to Luke Altmeyer and can you get him to make some of those mistakes? Luke Altmeyer, when he's in a rhythm, when he's playing good football, there's a reason he was a four-star coming out who committed to Ole Miss. There's a reason that he has put up some really big games in the past of his career. That being said, when he's hot in the pocket, when the game is sped up for him a little bit, he will make those mistakes. You look at the Illinois offensive line, has not been great in pass protection. Luke Altmaier has been taking some sacks. He's got sacked an 8.4% of his drop back so far. That's 102nd in the country. You look at this Nebraska defense, they got absolute dudes on the defensive line. They have really just taken over every single game they've played in so far. That's the matchup I'm looking for. Like Nebraska has made it a priority to take the football away. They've been doing a very good job of that average of two turnovers per game. Can you get to Luke Altmaier with four, and can you force him into some bad mistakes? Biggest key for this Nebraska defense going up against this line of offense. Because even in that Kansas game, and you obviously saw it going back to last year, they kind of oscillate pretty wildly in terms of what yeah. the offense looks like, not only from game to game, but even from like drive to drive. So. Again, Luke Altmaier, you're kind of set it. When he's playing good ball, when he's playing, getting the ball out of his hands on time, when he's using his legs, he makes plays for that team. He made a lot of really nice plays, made some big-time throws. Obviously, I think they still have a very good stable of wide receivers with this Illinois program. Clearly, I think led by Zachary or Zachary. Zachary Fr- it, they, got two, they got two wide receivers. So Luke Altmaier, they've had 56 catches on the year, over 30 of them have gone to two, Pat Bryan or, or, or Zach, I want to call him Zachariah, Zachary Franklin. Those guys, you're trying to take away something from Illinois. You want to take away those two wide receivers and kind of make them win with some of the other role players in this Illinois offense that, you know, haven't been focal points for Illinois up to this point in the season. And obviously I think the big issue is, is they need to be able to run the ball better. When you think Brett Beal and coach teams, you think, I think better offensive line play than frankly what they've got over the last two years. And it's felt like they've had the guys that, especially last year, I mean, obviously this year turning it over a little bit, but I think you want to see this team get to back to being a little bit more physical, being able to run the ball. I think the running back position, frankly, is a bit of an issue. Like they don't have that guy who you love running it. I don't think they're making a ton of plays from that spot. So that'll be something certainly I think to watch is like, can they get that going a little bit? Can they play that physical Illinois brand of football that when it felt like they were on the rise with Brett Bielma, that part of the game was really rocking. Cause again, I mean, they're throwing the ball at a really high level. I think that's what the frustrating part is. You kind of think like, well, that was the part that you were going to have to figure out. Now it's like, you got to get back to Brett Bielma's basics and see if that offensive line can make it happen. Well, brother, I am sorry to inform you that Friday night in Lincoln, Nebraska might be a tough matchup for Illinois to get the ground game going. Nebraska's defense allowing 1.6 yards per carry, number three in the country. This is a hard Nebraska defense to run the football on. Their linebackers are playing exceptionally well, right? Makai and John Bullock has been a revelation. Like John Bullock was solid last year. John Bullock's been a dude for Nebraska this year. Obviously, when you have guys like Ty and Nash up front, really hard to run the football. That's kind of the key here. Like Nebraska stopping the run on first and second down, forcing third and longs, getting after Luke Altmaier, potentially making him make some of those 
look, we all know Luke Altmaier will make those mistakes that make you scratch your head. He's been good the first three games not doing so, but we all know that there's a history of him doing so. That's been an emphasis for Tony White. Like, hey, we've caused so much chaos last year, but we didn't force that many turnovers. Every time I watch a Nebraska hype video or a Nebraska offseason video, get the ball, get the ball, get the ball. That's all Tony White says. And like, this is a Nebraska team that wants to turn the ball over. Can they force Luke Altmaier into doing so? Biggest question, Dill. Night game, Lincoln, Nebraska, ranked matchup, Illinois, eight and a half point dogs coming into this game. How are we feeling? Yeah, I like Nebraska. And it starts with just, I think, how much better they are on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Again, Illinois losing a fair amount from that defensive line and offensive line. And I'm not sure they're really replacing it in the way they need to. And again, I like what Illinois has in terms of their perimeter play. I think the secondary is great. I think their wide receivers are really good and can make plays. But I also think Nebraska's not giving up a whole lot in that area either. I think you look, that secondary did a really, really nice job of controlling a very athletic Colorado offense. I just don't think if Illinois can be balanced, they can really play great football on the offense side of the ball against this Nebraska team. And I just, I'm not quite sold on what that offensive line yeah. is yet to to make me think that. And I'm also, I, and I think Illinois is a, a significantly better team than they were in 2023. But I'm not sold in terms of how good this Illinois team is. Right, the the win against Kansas where. You did get outgained, but won the turnover battle and won that football game. And again, not trying to take away anything from Illinois, but you look at Kansas just lost to UNLV at home last weekend or this weekend, I should say. Like, how good is this Illinois team? And then you look at the matchups and say, I feel like Nebraska has a lot more avenues to win this football game. Illinois has struggled to stop the run. Nebraska has been running the football really well. Illinois has struggled to protect the passer. Nebraska has been getting after the passer quite well. I think Nebraska has some more avenues to win this game. You combine that with being Friday night in Lincoln, Nebraska, with the environment we're going to see. Give me Nebraska and the points. I think Nebraska wins this football game. Dude, we'll sign it out there again. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. If you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you all later.